Hi all, welcome back. In the previous video, we saw about the real-time challenges which people face while working on a cluster for debugging. We also saw the importance of the shared variables. I also gave an introduction to what are accumulators. So what are accumulators? These are the shared variables whose value can be accumulated. These accumulators are mainly used to implement the counters in the MapReduce or calculating the sum. The Spark context supports accumulators for primitive data types like int and float. Users can also define accumulator for custom type by providing a custom accumulator param object. Going back to the Spark architecture, you will be aware we have the driver program and various worker nodes. These tasks running on the worker node will be adding values to the accumulator. But the driver program is allowed to access its value. Just understand the key point here. The task running on the worker node can add values to the accumulator, but only the driver program will be allowed to access its values. Okay. So let us now try to understand the accumulators with the help of an example. Using the SPAR context, I am creating num as an accumulator with the help of accumulator method. So the initial value which I am assigning to the accumulator is 10. So now I create an RDD with the help of a paralyzed method. What is the use of this paralyzed method? This will actually allow Spark to distribute the data across multiple nodes instead of depending on one single node to process the data. Okay. So I have an RDD, but I want a function to parse through each item in the list. So let us create a function called f. Okay. Uh, in this function, I am trying to increase the value of this particular accumulator variable with the help of operator. So you have created an accumulator and you have increased the value with the help of this particular operator. But when you want to retrieve the value, you need a method, right? So this particular dot value method will be helpful for us in order to retrieve or get the accumulator's value. So let us try to run this program and see the value of accumulator. So initial value of accumulator is 10. So based upon the value of each item in the list, the value is 150. As you can see, the value of the accumulator variable is maintained throughout the session. So here I have another example where I have a simple text file with few lines of messages in it. I wanted to identify how many lines contain the keyword error. So I have the similar kind of program. I initialize the Spark context and then using the accumulator method, I create the accumulator variable. So in order to understand the initial counter, I'm just printing the counter variable value, value of the counter variable. Using the Spark context, I have created the accumulator variable as counter. And I'm trying to add values to the counter with the help of the add method. So this is also possible. There is a method called add, which helps to add values to the accumulator variable. And uh, in the Spark context, I have the text file method, which is useful for reading the text file. So I'm reading the sample.txt file and I'm trying to identify how whether the keyword error is there in every line of the text file. So from the text file, you can see the error keyword is found only once. Okay. So the output of this particular program. So the initial value of accumulator is zero and the final value is one. Hope you got an idea of about what are accumulators and what are the different methods which are used for creating the accumulator or retrieving the value of the accumulator and so on. In the next video, we will try to understand the broadcast variable in detail. Thanks for watching this video. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.